It's our fourth lesson here on discouragement, the underwear weapon of Satan. And we, we've established the fact that Satan would like to bring uh, discouragement into our lives. And what is discouragement? It's the taking courage out of us. And what does that normally create? What that creates is this. The scripture says, Jesus said to them, he says, and he saith unto them, why are you fearful? O ye of little faith. Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. One of the great things that the enemy tries to use is the outward elements of life, the adversities of life, the storms of life, as he was in the boat with them, and these men became fearful and little of faith. And that's what discouragement does. It brings fear into your life, and it, bring, and it robs you of faith. And God wants us to be a people that are not fearful and people are full of faith. So the quickest way for Satan to discredit God is to neutralize your faith. And the quickest way to neutralize your faith is to inject a lethal dose of fear into his victims. And that's what Satan did in Elijah. We saw that last week. Elijah had, became fearful. Remember, he was on the Mount Carmel. He's called down fire. Fire came down. The prophets of Baal are all destroyed. He's had great victory. And then one word from Jezebel, the queen, was that she said, I, will, I, I want him dead in the next 24 hours. And what, the, what it lied to him. He stood up in the face of larger adversity than that, but those words went to his heart. And, and that's what Satan did to him, and that's what he'll do to you. And to me, he'll say something in us that seems to bring fear and lack and destroy our faith. There's no faith in the presence of fear, nor fear in the presence of faith. We will reveal one or the other when confronted with the unknowns in life. And those are things that I have no control over. And those uncontrollable things will prove whether I'm living in faith or fear. And since God has not given us the spirit of fear, according to 2 Timothy 1 7, and instructs us, where do, where do, we, where do you think it comes from? If God didn't give it, where did it come from? Here's, here's the scripture For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but he says, but power, love, and a sound mind. So God's not the author of that spirit of fear. He's the author of power, love, and a sound mind. So let's talk about that real quick here. Faith produces and produces power, okay? Uh, the Bible says that he giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increases their strength. Even the youth shall faint and, we, and, and be weary and the young men shall utterly fail. But they that wait upon the Lord, he says, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary and walk and not faint. And so this is what God does. When God moves in our life, he brings strength and power into us. Love. Uh, you know, when we are operating in the right spirit, we have that securing love that nothing uh, can separate us from the love of God, that no one can lay any charge against God's elect. Uh, uh, so we, we see that he said, I'm persuaded neither death, life, nor angels, principalities, powers, things present, or things to come, nor height, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so we see faith uh, produces love, and faith produces a sound mind. The Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Isaiah says, thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. So God, when we're operating right and, and not in fear, we have love, power, and of a sound mind. Paul said, wherefore, sirs, he says, be of good cheer, for I believe God. They were all fearful of the storm on the boat. Paul says, look, don't let the outward circumstances detour you from believing God. Surround yourself with battle buddies that do not battle and do not battle alone. Don't face, you know, I don't face my life. I got people around me that encourage me, okay? And they're all intentional people in my life. Let me give you four points here and I'll finish up. When I'm discouraged, when I'm depressed, I listen to the word of God. I listen to the word over and over. I listen to the, most of the time, I listen to the uh, letters of Paul to the church. They're so encouraging to me. Second thing I do is my I walk, okay? When I get down, my son, there was a time where I was so discouraged. He said, Dad, you got to get up and walk. I, I mean, physically walk. Get your blood flowing right, fresh oxygen to the brain, your heart rate up, and it, will, it brings the right chemical balances to your brain. 
to pick you up emotionally. And thirdly, worship. When I'm down, or when I'm not down, but when I'm down, I choose to worship. I listen to godly music until my heart is lifted. And last of all, I work. In other words, I don't mean like, like over-exercise or over-work. I mean, when I'm down, I try to every day complete one task that I really want to complete. Uh, and, and by doing that, I feel like I've done something that day worthwhile and give my life to. So I guess what I'm saying to you is, you know, use this formula, word, walk, worship, and work when you're discouraged. And, uh, and, and don't let the enemy lie to you, recognize his lies, and counteract those with truth, okay? All right, I hope this is a blessing to you, this little series that we did here on discouragement, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching our Looking for Answers videos. And uh, this next couple of weeks, we'll be looking at discouragement, the unaware weapon of Satan. And Satan uses this weapon of discouragement in many of our lives. So it's always great to hear what we can do and what God can do through us. So why don't you join us in the next couple of weeks on discouragement, the unaware weapons of Satan.